What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Counter Punch Boxing News, and I have the one and only KP, Kenny Porter in the house, the trainer, the manager, the man, the myth himself, working arm day. How you doing today, brother? I'm great, man. And just by chance, uh, we bump into each other and we meet for the first time. And, yes, sir. You know, uh, along with everything else that I got going on, take a little time out to relax. This is how I relax working out. Okay. That's why you stay in great shape, fighting shape yourself. Absolutely. Well, hey, you got to know to train. Yeah, you got to know to train. But, you know, for me, you, you got to be able to do this. Right. You know? So I wasn't able to, you know, just be the guy that, that uh, told somebody how to do it. Wait a minute, hold on. You're not doing that right. Come over here. Let me show you how to right, actually right. do this. And I think a lot of people, a lot of fighters are visual as well. Right. And when they can actually see somebody can do some of the things mm -hmm. and show them how it's supposed to be done, they take to the information better. Absolutely. I'm one of those people. I'm a visual minded person. Right. If you tell me something, it ain't going to be as, as effective as actually seeing it being done. Right. Because right, right. a lot of times seeing is believing. It is. Oh, man. So you, 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 do you have anybody that you, you're training over here? You managing yeah, I've got, here? I've got a, a young man on being undefeated. Uh, I've been working with him for a year now. His name is Henry Sedino Martinez. Okay. Ring name is La Bazooka. He is. Uh, La Bazooka? Yeah, La Bazooka. He's 5 0 with four knockouts. He actually just fought last Saturday in Atlanta. Won that fight by knockout, first round knockout. Nice. He was an outstanding amateur for the Dominican team. Uh, he was slated to go to the Olympics and decided that he didn't want to wait around for it considering everything that was going on with you know, pandemic and all that kind of stuff. And so uh, he turned professional with me and uh, he's doing really well. That's good, man, that's good. So that's your top prodigy right now here. No, he's, the, he's the one that I have from the Dominican Republic. Gotcha, Actually gotcha. right now my top fighter would be Malik, Malik Montgomery. Okay. Malik Mayhem Montgomery is 13-0, uh, 12 knockouts. He is 126 pound NABO champion. Nice. And uh, Malik, uh, for me last year, we fought six times. We had six nice. fights in six months last year. He's staying busy. This year, he's already had two fights. Nice. So uh, he's done one main event on Fox Sports. He did really well there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we look forward to him stepping up even more this year. That's good, man. Yeah. With six bouts last year, he yeah. fought more than Canelo. Yeah, six <laughs> last year, two this year already. Right. Uh, he would have had his third last Saturday. But uh, it didn't make sense to put him in that main event there when he has a TV slot coming up. Mm -hmm. Then he also has a young brother uh, by the name of Mikhail Montgomery. And his ring name is 50 Kale. And he's four and over three knockouts. So those okay. guys combined uh, uh, 22 wins and about 17, 18 knockouts. I know what. That's good, man. That's yeah. good. Um, I know that you and your son has had an extraordinary career together. Um, beside the Trinidads and the Mosleys, you guys are by far probably the most close-knit father-son trainer uh, relationship that I've probably ever seen. Because, I, I mean, I, I've looked at your things and your stuff and your, your work regimen when you were getting prepared for uh, Adrian Broner, and you were trying to show him how to Hey, don't get caught in these traps because, you know, Adrian likes to counter and, and grab you. Right. And you were showing him, nope, too slow. Nope. You know, and man, it's, can you tell me about how that started? You and you your son? What? Yeah, I, I actually with Sean, you know, it goes back to when he was very young. So um, the shortest version I can give you, uh, I started, I, I got my first, I was already boxing myself. I was boxing. I was in the gym. I was fighting amateurs in the early 90s. I got my first fighter uh, that I worked with in 1991, right? Young kid I had, 15 years old, right? Mm -hmm. My first fighter, but I'm competing myself. But this is my first fighter. His name was DeAndre Johnson. They called him uh, Flash, right? And this kid wins the state, the region, we go to the national championship, and we get to the finals to be the number one guy in the nation. This is my first fighter, and we're gonna be number one in the nation, right? Mm -hmm. And we draw a kid by the name of Hector Camacho Jr. 
this is how far back I'm right. doing this, right? Right. This is who we draw in, draw in the finals. Hector Camacho Jr. We didn't win the decision. My kid wound up being number two in the nation. Ah, uh, right? gotcha. But I mean, that's a hell of a, you know, uh, thing to pull off. Right. My first time training a fighter, and my fighter makes it this far. You know, he's state champion, regional champion, and then, you know, fights for the national championship, and he winds up being ranked number two in the United States at that right. point. So when he comes home, we come back from the trip, man. It was crazy because all of these guys, older guys in the gym, trainers, managers, different people, they're all whispering in his ear. Everybody's talking to him. Everybody's saying, hey, man, you know, you, you did great, but that guy's too young to be training you. You know, he's only 23 years old, 22 years old. He's too young to train you, man. You need to come with us, that kind of thing. And sure enough, they were trying to pull him away from him. Right. They were trying to pull him away from me, and uh, a family member of his uh, kind of got in his ear as well. And some people were offering money and things like this. He's kid's 15 years old. Right. Right? And so I decided at that point, I'm not going to fight these guys for this kid. And it almost came to a physical fight. Like, literally, you know, someone's in the gym and said, hey, man, you ain't training him right. And if you don't train him right, you know, we're going to do this. And that, for me, was exciting. You want to fight? Let's fight. You know, I'm always looking for spar, but if you want to fight, let's do that. But the reality of the situation was, if I had beat up that family member, that kid no longer was going to want to be with me. Right. Because he was close to the family member. It was his uncle. Okay. So if I, you know, beat up his mom's brother, I'm going to lose the kid. So I thought about it, and I said, well, if I'm going to fight somebody over a kid, let me fight him with mine. So the next day I came into the gym with a four-year-old, and that was Sean, right? right? I actually brought him and his brother, and his brother was five. And I brought him in the next day. And my two sons went on and went over 20 national amateur championships. Wow. And I never had to fight anybody over my own kids. Only just protect my kids and make sure that they were safe. And you know that's what we did to get all the way up to where we at now. Mm -hmm. We started from the bottom. We really worked at everything we do. And it was all about discipline and repetition. And he followed that plan. And uh, there was a lot of success in it. 